Hey there and welcome to the Uke Stuff channel. This video is for those of you who just got a ukulele or an ukulele for Christmas. So I'd like to talk about a few things about the instrument and there is a gift for you in the description below that if you are starting off should be very helpful to you. So first of all, the instrument where I'm from is commonly called the ukulele and in fact if you call it anything else than that people are going to get confused but the actual pronunciation if you go to Hawaii is ukulele so um, again I think a lot of Hawaiians would appreciate it being called ukulele I find myself saying ukulele a lot and of course we all shorten it to uke when we play it so that's item number one so you just got your new ukulele what do you do first well if it's a new ukulele you need to look over your ukulele and check it out for damage. If it's a used ukulele, for example, it's somebody else in your family had, that may not be the case because you probably can't return it, but a new ukulele can almost always be returned to whoever it was bought from. So what do you look for? Well, first of all, you just look at the body and you make sure that there's no cracks. You make sure that there's no obvious dings or scratches that shouldn't be there. And, um, you know, you just look at the body first and just make sure that that's okay. Um, the next thing to do is to make sure that the tuning pegs work and that they aren't loose. Um, I've actually had an instrument where like one of these little screws in the back fell out one time. And in fact, this was my first ukulele that I bought. It, um, I bought it off of Amazon, which by the way, is usually not a great way to go. There are some good companies on Amazon, but, uh, a lot of companies just will put them in a box and send them to you. They don't ever do anything with them. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But what, you know, you can look it over and make sure that's good. So you should listen for rattles, especially if there's electronics in it. Now, if you listen, this one does make a noise. It's the way that these makalas, makalas are Kala's entry level ukulele. And instead of having a nut up here that connects all this hardware from that side, it just has these little covers that shake when you shake it. So it doesn't actually vibrate when you play it. Now, the other thing to do is to literally go up each string like this and listen for a buzz that would sound um, hard to replicate a buzz. But you should be able to go through and play each one and get a clear note all the way up. If you get buzzing and you'll know it, it'll make kind of a weird buzzing noise when you play it. Then... If it's a brand new ukulele I and you don't know how to troubleshoot it, which it can be really tricky to troubleshoot a buzz, you might want to send it back. That's what I had to do with my first version of this. I had to have a company send me a second one. So uh, definitely do that. So the next thing you should do is learn some of the terms of the instrument, just so you're familiar with it. And when you're watching YouTube videos or talking to other players, you kind of know what they're talking about. So let's talk about some of those terms. The first thing I think would be instrument size. Uh, ukulele is a small instrument. It is not a guitar. It is, it is in the lute family though, like a guitar. But there are four main sizes. There are other sizes, and we won't get into all those right now. But the one that I find myself playing most of the time is what they call concert. And what they talk about is scale length, which would be the length from right here, which is called the nut, to this white thing, which is called a saddle. On concert, that tends to be about 15 inches. Not always, but it tends to be. Now, in addition to concert, you have soprano, which is smaller. Soprano tends to be somewhere between 13 and 14 inches of scale length, generally 13.5 or so. Then, larger than concert is called the tenor. And the tenor gets even bigger and it has about a 17 inch scale length. If I, you know, compare the two of those, you can see how much longer it is. And then there's a whole nother uh, family of instrument that's called baritone. And although there are some baritones that are tuned the same as this. So if you have a soprano, concert, or tenor, the chords you learn are gonna work on all three of them. They're generally all tuned G, C, E, A. The baritone, which is the biggest of them all, has between 19 and a 20 inch scale length is tuned generally lower than soprano concert or tenor. So 
if you are learning baritone, this is probably not the video for you, but you're certainly welcome to stick around and watch it. Um, baritone is really gaining in popularity because people like that deep sound. And in reality, the, these four strings are the same as the top four strings on a guitar. So a lot of guitar players like transitioning over to baritone ukulele as well. So let's talk about some of the other parts. This whole bottom part is called the body. This right here is called the sound hole. Inside here, or this part right here is called the soundboard. This piece of wood right here is called the bridge that attaches the strings to the soundboard. This is called, again, the saddle. It's adjustable generally. There are some ukuleles that are not that you can raise up and down to get better action. Moving up the inside, oh, by the way, you've got back and sides, which is pretty standard. You'll notice this has a jack. And so this one is a, a ukulele that you can plug into a sound system. This one has what they call a passive pickup, which means that it has no internal power and you'd have to connect it to a preamp generally to get good sound out of it. But there is a little, uh, what they call a piezo pickup, a little strip of wire underneath this saddle that allows the vibrations to travel out to that. This is called a strap button, by the way. You can install those if you don't have them on your ukulele. Um, a lot of people don't like using them. A lot of people do like using them. I find that generally I like using them most of the time. These are called strings, <laughs> right? Pretty standard. This whole thing is called the neck. This is called the heel. This is called the headstock. These are called tuners. Generally, these are called tuning pegs or tuning heads. This thing up here is called the nut. And it does two things. It keeps the strings this far away and it raises how high or low these are off of the fretboard. Sometimes there's something called a zero fret, which is a fret above, just below this that allows the instrument to stay in tune without worrying about what the nut does, which is kind of a neat deal there. Then these metal things, although sometimes they're made of plastic, are called frets and they're on a fretboard. Now, by the way, when somebody asks you to play the first fret, for example, on the first string, and the strings are numbered from the floor up, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and the frets are numbered going down, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's sort of a grid thing. So somebody says first string, first fret, you're going to be the one closest to the floor on that first area above that first fret. Uh, one of my teacher friends, Chris Gilbert, talks about this being the first box, and that sometimes helps her students before she trans, you know, kind of transports over to using the word fret. So if that helps you, that's pretty good there too. And those are the main parts of the ukulele. The next thing, a lot of people won't talk about this, uh, a lot of people will talk about it all the time, and I talk about it quite a bit, is one of the things you also have to be concerned about when you're starting this instrument is that it's set up pretty well. And what set up means, number one, is that there are no sharp fret edges, and that's a comfort issue. And then the other one is a playability issue, which is something that we call the string height, or we call the action. And ultimately, what you want is for there to be about a half a millimeter at the first fret where that occurs. And if you count down to the 12th fret, somewhere between, anywhere between two and three millimeters there. Now, this side is really the critical one, more even more than this side, because if in many ukuleles are shipped with just stock parts that have been put on, if this action is really high here, you have to press down really hard to play a note, and a lot of the notes that you're going to play and learn are right up here. So it makes it really hard to play. So if your ukulele has really high action, if you're handy... You can watch videos on YouTube and learn how to do it yourself, or you can take it to a person that's called a luthier that can set it up for you for better playing. Um, hopefully, you bought your ukulele from either a vendor that does a really good job with setups, or um, you know, like if you bought from uh, certain companies on Amazon. But unfortunately, a lot of the the instruments that are just shipped and sent to you are not really well set up. If you order from a place like Mims Ukes, the Uke Republic, the ukulele site, Elderly Music, all of those companies include a setup on your 
ukulele before you buy it, as do many other shops. So it's worth asking about. And if it's not set up, please, please, and it's not good, please, for your sake, get that done. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is tune your new ukulele. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube that will show you how to do it. But the strings generally are numbered four, three, two, one. People will say, my dog has fleas, which has nothing to do with the actual tuning. I, I've been using the Pokemon thing. Gotta catch them all. That will work too. It's G above middle C, middle C, E above middle C, and A. And that's what we call re-entrant tuning because you have a high pitch, a lower pitch, another pitch, and back up again. So you re-enter on the C. That's called re-entrant tuning. And they sell tuners that you can clip onto your headstock and tune with. And you just play the string and you tighten one way to go up, the other way to go down. And as long as you're going for those pitches, you'll get it. So plenty of YouTube videos on how to tune your instrument, but that's the next thing to do. Oh, and also, once you've tuned it, if it's brand new, you're going to need to tune it again and again and again and again and again. I find that it's about 30 minutes of playing a lot of chords before my strings start to settle. Some people will do things like they'll stretch the strings, they'll pull up on them, um, they'll pull them down, they'll do other things. You can watch videos on, on that as well. But ultimately, um, I just find that tuning them to pitch or right above pitch and then back down again and then just playing a lot will help my strings settle and that's what works for me. So after your ukulele is tuned, then you need to start learning how to play it. And this is where the gift comes in. So I'll get there in a second. First of all, to hold your ukulele, generally what we do is we wedge it kind of in our arm over here. And our arm sort of holds the ukulele up. So I can hold it with one arm and it's up. And that allows my left hand to move. Now, I've been watching a lot of videos and a lot of... I've been going to ukulele conferences and other things. And the general consensus of the books and so forth is to play your ukulele with the left hand like this. If you notice, it's kind of, it's not Bentley weird, it's straight, but that's going on. But a lot of the pros that I'm watching want the ukulele here in, in the comfortable part of the hand where it rests on the hand as the pivot point. And then that frees your hand to do what it needs to do to play the chords. So as you learn how to play, work on that um, I'm going to tell you that suspending it in midair is not what the pros say to do. So just keep that in mind. So once you're holding it, then how do you play the chords? And this is where the free gift comes in. I have created an entire method for classroom teachers that I use based on ukulele play along videos. So the screen shows the words and the chords to play. And there are more than 1,100 of those videos by different creators. I think I've made a, close to 450 at this point. But they're out there, and I've kind of organized them for teachers for school-appropriate videos. Well, what I've done is I've taken that method, and I've truncated the first unit of that into a Get You Started on Ukulele slideshow. So if you go to the description below, you can open up that document. And what that will do is it will, um, first of all, show you how to play the chord, then give you what I call a skill drill. It lets you practice changing the chords that you know a little bit faster and a little bit faster before you have to play the song and then a couple songs for each of the first five chords. There's about 18 uh, songs there total. So again, everything is a YouTube video. So it's all out there on the net and it is free and accessible for everyone to use. So that is my gift to you this holiday season. Strumming is simply generally one finger pointing at yourself, pointing at the ground, with a flicking of the water off the wrist method. And strumming should happen right about here on your ukulele, not above the sound hole. So if you have guitar background, you're used to strumming over the sound hole. It moves up on the ukulele because then you find yourself in the sweet spot of the string halfway through the instrument. So that's really good. A couple other things I should mention, if you're looking for the chords for specific songs, check out ukutabs.com. And if you're looking for playlongs, go to ukeplaylongs.com. That's where we have the index of those over 1,100 songs. A few more things to say. 
if you've been playing for a while, give it a rest. Your fingers will hurt for a little bit. It's not as bad as learning guitar with metal strings, but still, your fingers might hurt. Give it a rest from time to time. You may want to play with a pick. Now, a plastic pick is not recommended, but if you have a felt or leather pick, that can be used. If you really love the instrument and you love what's happening, look to see if there's a, an ukulele or a ukulele club or group in your area because they would love to have you. And there are a lot of great ukulele sites on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and just even on the web. Take some time to care for your instrument, learn how to wipe it down. Over time, you'll want to learn how to change strings. It will save you a lot of money. If you have a wooden fretboard, you will want to oil that. Uh, when you change strings and keep that and then also if you have a wood ukulele of any kind and you live in a dry climate by the way winters in well, for example the united states in the northern u.s very dry because we have heat in our homes that sucks the humidity right out of the air you'll want to humidify your instrument whenever the humidity is out below 40 percent and they sell humidifiers and you can also make your own this channel actually has some videos about how to make your own um, when you change your strings, you want to make sure that all the hardware is tight. If there are screws and so forth, and there's some great tools like the Music Nomad 81 Octopus that you can buy that has a bunch of different things that you can tighten nuts on the front and you can tighten all the screws just to make sure that everything is still good. And then finally, you're going to find out if you like this instrument that you'll want to buy your next one because uh, at first they're rather inexpensive. Here's my suggestion to you. Give yourself at least a month of playing and learning about the instrument before you go out and buy your second ukulele. It's not uncommon for someone to buy one, fall in love with it quickly, and to have four or five of them in literally a couple of weeks. Give yourself some time, save up some money, because if your first ukulele was kind of inexpensive, you'll want to move up to the next models. And if you're interested in ukuleles, there's plenty of reviews on this channel. And then the other place I would send you is gataukulele.com or gataukulele.com. A guy by the name of Barry Maz in the UK who reviews ukuleles and his opinion is really worth its weight in gold. So that summarizes the things that I wanted to bring you today as you start playing ukulele in your life. I am very grateful for this instrument. It came to me just a few years ago. I brought it to my middle school students at the time, and I brought it to them for an experience, and I never expected to fall in love with it, but I did, and it has revitalized my love of music and actually the way that I think about music completely. So I'm very grateful for this instrument. It's been fun. It's been social to get to know the people out there that are involved with it, and I think you'll love it too. So thanks for watching the video. Be sure to come back and check out this channel sometime. Uh, the Uke Stuff channel, if you can, subscribe, that'd be great. And also don't forget about the Uke Playlongs channel, as well as the list of all of our resources at ukeplaylongs.com. And of course, don't forget about ukutabs.com too. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Mother and child